Hi everyone, I'm Nisha Talagala and I'm going to talk with you today about AI literacy. What is it and why do you need it? Say you get up in the morning and go about your day. How do you use AI? You may start by checking the weather on Alexa and then use a GPS or a self-driving car to take you to work. You may buy something using Amazon recommendations and later in the evening you might watch a movie using Netflix recommendations. And finally set an alarm with Alexa before you go to bed. These are AIs that you see every day that are all around you. These are the AIs that you see. Now what about the AIs that you don't see? AIs in your life that you don't see are being used to decide things like recommending who can get a loan at a bank, what kind of credit card interest rate you might get, things like that. If you see an ad that says that a new company may get you a loan approval in an hour while their competitors take a week, that's likely an example of AI in action. In many industries, AI is being used to take existing services and make them faster by using automation. AI is also being used to allocate budgets. In 2018, the city of New York instituted a commission to investigate algorithmic fairness because people were trying to understand why AIs and algorithms were allocating different budgets for neighboring districts, for example, for police cars for neighboring precincts. Yeah. AI is also being used in medicine to help doctors understand risks for certain types of diseases, evaluating eye scans for diabetic retinopathy. It's being used to detect credit card fraud, anomalous behavior in casinos, being used to read resumes, select people for hiring, and countless other things. These kinds of things are the areas that you may not see every day that are uses of AI, but are still impacting the way that your life, your health, your financial prospects, and your employment prospects are interacting with technologies. So now, why should we care about all this? First of all, what this implies is that the things that you do, what websites you visit, how you spend money, you know, books that you read, are all data points that are being assembled about you. And some of these data points are finding their way into an AI, and will affect the way that companies might treat you. It is also not clear exactly how and which information makes it to which company and which AI. The second thing, reason you should care about this is because AIs are not always perfect. Sometimes they make mistakes. For example, there's a well-known case of parole recommendations. There was an algorithm which was used in the United States to assess recidivism risk, and this algorithm was found to be biased against African Americans. Studied shows that when it was used, it was much more likely to classify an African-American inmate as likely to relapse into violence and then affect their ability to get parole. This is an example of how an AI making mistakes can cause real problems to human lives and livelihood. So hopefully all of these will convince you that AI is a very powerful technology, but it is something that has to be used with awareness and care. Using AI effectively by maximizing its benefits and minimizing its risks requires that a large fraction of the population understand, at least at some essential level, how this technology works. Arthur C. Clarke has said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. If you follow the press, you will hear a lot of things like AI has beaten humans at chess. Just recently, there is an AI technology called GPT that has been writing human realistic articles and software programs. There is a sense that AI is going to replace jobs and is an all powerful, almost magical technology. It may look like magic, but it is not. What it is in reality, is a set of very advanced computer programs and advanced math that is constantly being improved. It has actually been around for decades. It has recently gotten a boost because of the tremendous amount of data that is being gathered by everything from medical devices to shopping websites. And this combined with the fact that there is now much more powerful compute engines out there means that very advanced algorithms can now crunch massive amounts of data and generate predictions and insights that were not possible before. However, the most important thing is that AI requires tremendous amounts of human effort. So whenever you see a successful and sophisticated artificial intelligence doing something amazing, a lot of human effort has gone into actually making it work behind the scenes by tuning it, you know, preparing the data to make it easier for the AI to learn, by iterating and improving it, and so forth. So it is not really magic. 
What it is, is a set of advanced technologies and some very serious human effort that has resulted in some very impressive outcomes. This human role in AI is key to its effectiveness, both in terms of increasing its positive values, but also minimizing the negative concerns. So this brings us to the AI native generation. When I was in grade school, we did not have the internet, much less artificial intelligence. My 12-year-old daughter's life, however, is very different. AI is all around her, and when she grows up, it will play a role in the opportunities available to her and in the way that the society that she lives in behaves. Our children are the first AI native generation. It is in everybody's interest to make sure that this generation learns about AI and is able to use it effectively, safely, and responsibly. It is also in our interest to make sure that this generation is able to participate in an informed conversation about the role that artificial intelligence should play in society. So with that in mind, what is AI literacy? Let's start by talking about literacy. Literacy, most commonly referred to as the ability to read and write, is more generally meant to refer to competence in a chosen topic or domain. So AI literacy means several things means that a person understands what an AI is, how it works at an essential level, not necessarily at a deep mathematical level. They understand how to build one, how to use one, assess one, and improve one. They understand AI's strengths and weaknesses. They understand how businesses and governments seek to use AI or already use AI, and how these technologies work and interact with human information. They are able to understand how AI works and interacts with the society around it, how it works with data, with laws, privacy, ethics, and so forth, and the, all of the interactions therein. So the idea is, of AI literacy is to develop a core essential AI competency, appreciate its unique strengths, and also unique challenges, and as a human, be able to meet it halfway and create a solution that actually works for the people around us. And AI literacy means understanding enough about the tech that you can build useful things and interact safely with systems that use the tech and understand what it is capable of and not capable of doing. People who are AI literate should also be able to engage in conversations about how it can be used and should be used. I have been teaching AI literacy for about a year now to students in grades four through 12. Over the past year and a half, I have personally taught several hundred students of this age group. These students have learned what AI is, the different types of AI, how they work, and what they can do. Now note that most of the math that lives underneath an AI algorithm is usually taught at college level. At best, you can get a start on it in AP Calculus. Virtually all of the students that I have taught uh, about AI literacy do not have this math knowledge but they can still understand the essence of how it works at an intuitive level. They can appreciate that it learns, that it learns from data, how to measure how well it's working, and also how to improve it. These students have built their own AI projects on topics as wide ranging as games, chatbots, diagnosing diseases, predicting climate change, assisting the blind, sorting trash, recommending movies, and so on. Through these models, projects, they learn the life cycle of an artificial intelligence, the data, the training, understanding how to test it, how to interact with it, and how to improve it. By going through such a process, they also appreciate the kinds of questions that AI brings to human lives and societies. Simple example is AI learns from data. How do I make sure that the data is good? The AI doesn't know, so it can't help me. It is my responsibility as a human to make sure that the data that I'm using to train an AI is good, and that if it is someone else's property or it's if it's about another person, that I am not violating the person's privacy by integrating their data into an artificial intelligence that can then use it, apply it in lots of other apps. So these are examples of AI literacy in action. A specific example of a project is Comzilla. Comzilla was the creation of four sixth grade students from the Harker Middle School in San Jose, California. These students wanted to build an app to help their fellow middle schoolers with school-related stress. They built a chatbot, Chai the Puppy Bot, which interacts with students, asks them about their day, and uses AI to assess the stress level. 
They communicate the stress level to the parents and recommend games for the children to play. This was a great example of learning and applying AI literacy. Let's start with the data. In order to assess middle school stress, they did a survey of more than 100 middle schoolers on a topic that's admittedly somewhat sensitive and private. They worked with their school counselor and their school administration and learned how to make sure that the student's privacy was respected, the results were kept private, they designed a survey with the right questions and also made sure that students with emergencies would know that they should reach out to someone immediately. Throughout the development of the AI, as well as the application that used it, they maintained this privacy and learned how to measure the AI and understand and confirm that it was behaving well. This project took about four to five months to do, from the data to training the app to building the AI itself. And in the end, they had a solution to a problem that they cared about. This real world exercise helped them appreciate AI in its entirety. Not just how it works at a technical level, but also how it can be applied in a responsible and productive way, and also how to use, work with the humans around them to make sure that the AI was helpful and productive to all. Comzilla won uh, Technovation's AI Challenge for North America in 2020. So what have I and others learned from these experiences? First, I have learned that students of this age group can easily understand at an essence how an AI works, and they're extremely capable of applying AI to solve real world problems and appreciating the myriad of issues that arise. They can do this without knowing any of the underlying math, and in many cases, not ne needing to know a great deal of code either. These concepts can be very successfully communicated to K through 12 students and can be understood and applied. Learning AI literacy has set them up well to appreciate the tech with its power and its challenges, not just in an engineering context, but also with respect to its role in legal, social, and other contexts. We have seen that learning AI has given students a new energy and appreciation for STEM, since they can see how now AI and STEM can work together to solve real problems. Nearly all of the students that we have encountered want to learn more AI. Nearly all of them want to learn more programming and coding, and about half of them want to learn more math. So what we have learned so far is that AI is an extremely powerful technology. It is all around us, and you see many things about it every day, but its greatest role is likely in the things that you don't see but things that still interact with your lives and your community. We have learned that our kids are the first AI native generation and that they can learn the essence of AI very effectively, become AI literate and use this knowledge to solve problems even before they go to college. Students with AI literacy can appreciate the challenges, the impact and also be able to comment and have a viewpoint about the role of AI in society. So what does the future hold? AI is impacting every aspect of our societies and every industry. There is a massive upskilling effort underway by companies to educate existing workers to prepare them for this in coming technology change. There are debates about how to use this technology effectively, fairly, and how to grow human trust in AI. There is also laws be emerging to ensure that companies that use customer information in AI algorithms are able to explain to their customers how this information was used. You can see these laws coming out in the European Union, in different states in the United States, sometimes the city ordinances, and it's widely expected that case law will, be, will occur in the next few years as people try to understand how to build policies around the emerging technology. All of these and the general pervasiveness of AI across industries and applications means that AI literacy will need to not just be a computer science topic, but something that a majority of us will need. Just like we increasingly think of coding and programming as a core skill, AI literacy is also a core skill, particularly for this generation, the first AI native generation, and for all the generations that follow it. These students need to prepare for a future where the AI is in every app, every device, every process. Our school age students should have a working literacy and competence that they can then apply to whatever field they choose to. AI will be everywhere in the future, not just in computer science careers, but legal, social, and other careers. 
The answer is not to fight it or to replace it, but rather to interact with it in a productive and collaborative way that amplifies its strengths and manages its weaknesses. I believe that one of the most impactful things we can do today is to ensure that this generation of students become AI literate. I have shared our experiences to date in this journey and what we are learning so far about different ways to accomplish this goal. Thank you very much.